very good morning to you all and welcome to our annual bereavement service here at St Andrews with Castlegate United Reformed Church, which is led for us today by our minister, the Reverend Chris Ford. The service is once again being live streamed on YouTube and microphones are sighted around the sanctuary of the church. But to all those watching at home, we send our greetings this morning. For your safety, could I draw your attention to the order of service, which does contain important information about our current COVID security measures on the back page. And for those wishing to contribute to the offertory this morning, the church has contactless payment facilities, which are once again located on the shelf uh, on the font side aisle. At the conclusion of worship, would you please remember to take your order of service with you? Looking ahead this week, Goldsmith Players meet on Tuesday at 7.45 and the Worship in Education group meets on Wednesday of this coming week, that's Wednesday evening I presume, and on, uh, uh, choir practice will be held on Thursday of this week starting at 7.45 and will once again be simultaneously held on Zoom and in person. And a reminder that the Stroke Club will not be meeting during January and hopefully uh, meetings on Thursdays will recommence uh, in February. And further to my announcement last Sunday about the introduction of the Stepwise course, this was to be uh, a meeting led by the Reverend Dr. Peter Stevenson, which had been advertised for Monday the 31st here in our church. I can now tell you that this meeting has been rearranged for Monday the 28th of March, uh, starting at 7.30 p.m. here in church uh, as a result of Elders' Council who are concerned that the original date would have been too soon for such a large in-person event. But we are deeply grateful to Peter Stevenson for being willing to change the date for this particular event. Next Sunday, uh, morning worship will be led by our minister, uh, Chris Ford, and finally, please note that today is the last day for contributions to the February newsletter. Good morning, everyone. Let us worship God together. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you. We sing together our opening hymn, Number 104, praise my soul, the King of heaven, to his feet thy tribute bring.
Let us pray. Loving God, Lord of all eternity, we come before you in this moment, giving praise that you have first drawn near to us, that you are not a God content to loom above us, but a God who lives alongside us, a God who has taken on human flesh and who knows all too well what it's like to feel tears run down your face. Loving God, ruler of all time, you give each of us our own brief span in this world, charging us in every passing moment to love one another as you have first loved us, to see every encounter with another person as an opportunity to encounter you. How carelessly we let our opportunities slide by, O oh Lord. How often we fill our precious moments with selfish indulgence and miss our chances to serve you in serving others. How often we speak a harsh word or leave a kind one unsaid. Forgive us, loving Lord, for those times when we have squandered the gifts you have given when we have let relationships wither and golden moments go to waste. Loving God, rock of ages, still you redeem all our regrets and our sorrows. Still you gather up all our moments and our memories and cherish them till that day when every tear will be dried and we ourselves will be gathered into your eternity. So in this moment, we come before you to rejoice and to lament, to smile and to weep, to remember and to worship. As we say together the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The first reading this morning is from Isaiah 42, verses 1 to 9. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out, or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break and a smouldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his law the islands will put their hope. This is what God the Lord says, he who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and all that comes out of it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give my glory to another or praise to idols. See the former things have taken place and new things I declare before they spring into being. I announce them to you.
you sing together our next hymn, number 658, for all the saints who from their labours rest. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, we ask your blessing upon our young friends and their leaders as they now leave for their separate services. We pray during this time of fellowship together they may grow to love you and to love each other more. We offer our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen.
second reading today is John chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. On the third day, a wedding took place at Canaan in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Dear woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My time has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six water jugs, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, and each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Now draw some out and take to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice of wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests had had too much to drink. But you have saved the best until now. This the first of his miraculous signs Jesus performed at Canaan in Galilee. He thus revealed his glory and his disciples put his faith in him. Thanks be to God. Sing together hymn number 552, 552, the King of love my shepherd is, whose goodness faileth never.
feel no guilt and laughter. They know how much you care. Feel no sorrow in the smile that they are not here to share. You cannot grieve forever. They would not want you to. They'd hope that you could carry on the way you always do. So talk about the good times and the way you showed you cared. The days you spent together, all the happiness you shared. Let memories surround you. A word someone may say will suddenly recapture a time, an hour, or a day that brings them back as clearly as though they were still here and fills you with the feeling that they are always near. For if you keep those moments, you will never be apart and they will live forever locked safely within your heart. Our choir will now lead our worship in the singing of the anthem, Light a Candle, words and music by Marta Keane, arranged by Jay Althouse.
we remember with love and thanksgiving all those members and friends who have died in the past year. Robert Armstrong, Shirley Barrett, Miranda Chambers, Dorothy Cubbon, Barbara Ellis, Derek Henry, Marlene Horton, Sylvia Hurt, Keith Jones, Donald Lovett, Sandy Malvenon, Mavis Marshall, Ian Mattison, Ruth Newton, Margaret Ratcliffe, John Rawson, Margaret Taylor, Ian Williams, Mary Williams. If you would like to come forward and light a candle in memory of your lost loved one, then please do so now. May I ask you please to come up in groups of three, no more than three at a time, and once three have cleared the table, then the next three please come up.
We sing together hymn number 590, 590, in heavenly love abiding, no change my heart shall fear. Over the last couple of years, as we have battled the current pandemic, one of the most heart-rending restrictions has been on the number of people who have been permitted to attend funeral services, and on the prohibition of celebrating afterwards the life that has been lost. It is really only in the last half of last year that the numbers allowed at funeral services have increased, and the possibility of holding a celebration has been afforded. At the moment, of course, with the increase in the Omicron infection rate, such celebrations are becoming more difficult again. <coughs> Excuse me. It is a deeply felt need within most of us to celebrate the life of a loved one who has been taken from us. Indeed, celebration is a deeply felt human response to many of life's important events. We can certainly see from the life of Jesus that he never lost an opportunity to celebrate with his friends and family. This morning's reading from John's Gospel is strange to say the least, as Jesus turns himself into the most glorious divine barman, able to produce a vintage Grand Cru at request. Many commentators suppose that John is simply trying to emphasize Jesus as the true vine and the importance of sharing wine in order to remember him. However, he is clearly enjoying being at a wedding feast and he clearly enjoys sharing meals 
during many of his teaching stories. And of course, that last Passover meal was a three-day celebration of feasting, drinking, and dancing. Celebrating was important for Jesus, just as it is for us. For some of us, following on from the last two years and maybe going back even further than that, it will be important to find a way of celebrating the life of a loved one that we have lost. For some of us, it is important to have a place to visit, whether that be represented with a stone, a bench, a tree, a shrub, or some other ornament that represents the person, just so that we can be quiet with our own thoughts and feelings and remember in a special place. In some cultures, folk will take an offering to such a place, the person's favorite cake, their favorite drink, or their favorite slippers, their favorite flowers, anything that helps to celebrate the fullness of life that their loved one lived. For some of us, it is important to write down memories, to create a biography or a journal that celebrates the fullness of the life that has been lost. And for some, it is important to hold a party with family and friends, and not just once either, and to share stories together that bring the loved one back into heart and into mind. For some, it is important to visit a favorite holiday venue or to make a journey that both had planned to make and had never had the time to actually undertake. All of these things and so many others are ways of celebrating a life well lived. Hopefully, as we emerge from this pandemic, pandemic and hopefully we are emerging or beginning to emerge from this pandemic, there will be opportunities to celebrate our loved ones in ways that up to now have been denied to us. For some, that may feel to be a little too late, but I hope not. It is always possible to find a way to celebrate with others our love, our memories, our joy at the abundant life that has been shared with us, and that is now with God. Of course, the finest way of celebrating a lost loved one is to continue to live lives that honor all that they have been for us, and to find ways of sharing with others the love, the creativity, the faith, the joy in life that they have shared over their lives so steadfastly and so generously. We come before our God in a time of prayer and reflection. Let us pray together. We pray for the hungry people in the world. We pray for those who are imprisoned in a cycle of hunger and starvation. And for those who have been driven from their homes by civil war and are refugees with no freedom at all. For those whose names we do not know but whose faces we have seen on our television screens. For those whose names we do know, who are hungry for love, for joy, and for peace. May Christ fill empty lives. We pray for those in our community, for those who are our neighbors, and for those within whom we work, those whom we serve, and those with whom we share fellowship. We pray for those in our community who are lonely or alone, for those who are empty, and for those who long to be filled with joy, for those who are imprisoned in unemployment, and locked out of many of the things we take for granted. May Christ touch broken lives. We pray for those in need of healing, for those who need to feel the touch of God's grace upon their lives, 
and for those who have yet to acknowledge their need for forgiveness and wholesome. For those whose lives are wrecked with addiction. For those who long for healing of a relationship. For those locked up in doubts, anxiety and fears. And for those who long for a healing experience of God's love. May Christ heal broken lives. We pray for those who feel imprisoned by their bereavement and loss. For those overwhelmed by the changes they're facing at home, at school, at work or in their own daily lives. For those who are finding that the journey of life can be filled with pain sadness, anguish, or despair. And for those overwhelmed by their sense of responsibility for others, may Christ transform existence into life. We pray for the life of the church and for our fellowship in Christ, for the mission and the witness of this church and for our example of care and love. For everyone who holds office or serves Christ in any way in this place. For those who care for others in the community. And for those who proclaim our faith. For those who give up their time and their skills and their money. That others may hear of God's love for every meeting, for discussion and planning, for a new vision and realization of all that it can be through the power of the Holy Spirit. May Christ give us all new life, new hope and new freedom. And we pray for ourselves and for any for whom we are concerned for a new sense of the privilege of being God's people and of the freedom that Christ has won for us, for the presence of the Holy Spirit to empower us, to enter into the freedom that will bring glory to God and joy to ourselves. May Christ make us truly free. In Christ's name. Amen. Would you all stand, please? Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, every good and wonderful gift comes from you we express our gratitude for all that you give us through the gifts we now bring to you in whatever way we are able to offer them. We pray that you will take us, all that we are and all that we have, and use all for the furthering of your kingdom here in this place and throughout your world. And to you, eternal God, we all honor, praise and glory now and forevermore. Amen. We conclude our worship as we sing together hymn number 247, 247, the first version, Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son.
houses of service. Be thou a bright flame before me. Be thou a guiding star above me. Be thou a smooth path below me. Be thou a kindly shepherd behind me, today and forever. Amen.